This is Minister Isaiah Lee from Next Level Ministry. We pray that this message will be impacting to you, that you will hear today, and that you will continue to tune in with us each and every week. Amen. That the empowerment that you need will come forth in power and demonstration from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We love you and God bless you.
leadership and all the different stuff God allowed David to, amen, to, to rule and reign over. David still was thankful in spite of who he were and what his position were in life. It don't matter how high we get in life, we still need to be thankful to God for where we at and where, we, where, we, where God has taken us. We don't never need to get too high in life that we can't be thankful for the people that God put in our circle, that God gave us as family to be a part of our family amen we always need to be thankful for those things and you might say sometimes preacher you just don't know what some of the things that i'm unthankful for because of how i was treated how i was how, how i was brought forth in this life you don't understand the hurt and the pain no i don't understand but god understands it and god he heals us and allows us to be thankful in spite of what we've been through Amen. A lot of us been through some stuff. If we tell about it, it'll break some hearts in here. It'll have people crying and, and just can't believe that we went through what we went through. We've been through what we've been through. I've been through a lot, amen, in this life. I mean, I don't tr went through a lot of things, but God had given me victory. Amen. And that's why I'm standing here today because of his, my thankfulness to the Lord. Because of what God has done in me. Amen. And some of us can remember, like Sister, amen, Sister Chandler was saying, and remembering the things that God, how we were, and what God has done, what He brought us out of. Amen. You just go back into life just a little bit and just take a glimpse of how bad it were at one time. How, how, how it didn't look like no light going to be shining in your life. But God allowed light and His mercy to shine over your life. God allows you to come out of that dark place in life. Amen. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to give God the glory for. That's something to look into the hill for which comes thy help for. Because God is the one who brought you out of that dark place. It was dark. And it didn't look like no light was going to shine anymore. But God brought you through that thing. Even as David said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I know that I was going through a lot of stuff. But God brought me through. And I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for that. A grateful heart. Amen. A thankful heart. Amen. A excited heart that knowing that God done brought me from a mighty long way. Some of us wouldn't have the jobs that we have now if it had not been for the Lord. Some of us wouldn't be living where we're living now if it had not been for the Lord. Some of us wouldn't even be alive right now if it had not been for the Lord. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to be grateful for. If we could have been dead, sleeping in our grave. But God saw fit to let us see it under that. I mean, look at that car accident. I mean, that car accident supposed to tuck you out of here. I mean, that, that shooter that was right on your neighborhood, the bullet went right past you, but it didn't hit you. Amen. And there are all kinds of different dangers and harms that was all around you, but God protected you. That's enough to be thankful for this holiday. That's enough to give God glory for right now because some of us know where we've been and we know how grateful hearted we are to God for what he has done. Amen. Being thankful is very important in this hour. The Bible talks about a lot of people being ungrateful in this day and hour and this time we're living in. The Bible speaks on that in the book of uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter. If we talk about how people, the children, and everybody will be unthankful, ungrateful for the things that people do for them, you know, and, uh, and not appreciating nothing. But God wants us to understand it's a time for thanksgiving. It's a time to be thankful. It don't really looking at all the bad. Go thinking about the good that you can be thankful for. You always can find some work. They, you know, one thing about it. If you go clean your car right now, and you get it sparkling clean, and you look back and you know you got it, man, I got it, I got it good. And you look back and you look, you find a little bit of spot of dirt right over there. So now, if you go looking for something bad, you can find it. If you go looking for dirt, you can find it. You go looking for problems, you can find it. But stop looking at the problem. Start looking at the problem solver. Start thanking God for being a problem solver. Too many times we look right at the problem and don't thank God for being the problem solver. God said, focus on those things above, not on the things on this earth. 
I am the God that healed thee. I'm the God that brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I am the God that you give glory and honor to. I'm the God that you need to be grateful to because I am the one that's keeping you alive. And we're thankful to everybody else except God sometimes. I mean, we be walking up to people, oh, I thank you for giving me this, I thank you for giving me this. Don't never look to God, I thank you for giving me this through them. It's always a higher source than who we're looking at. Sometimes we're looking at who we're looking at, but we need to be looking up to who we need to look, be looking at. Amen. And a lot of times we focus on the things on the earth, and that's the one we mess up with. And that's how we lose our focus, focusing on things on this earth. Because he said in everything, you know, David said, Look, lift my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. So God made everything. So if anybody you need to be grateful to, thankful to, it is God. Amen. But now the Bible said everything, give thanks. So you need to thank your mama. You need to thank your daddy. You need to thank your brother. You need to thank your sister. Every man just for whatever they done done good for you. And even though, you know, some of the things, the bad things we've been through, it brought us to a, a good place in our life. Some of the bad things that we done been through in our life, it done pushed us into our destiny. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't went through what I went through. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I hadn't went through what I went through. I don't know where I would be now if I hadn't went through what I went through and God saved me when he did. I, I could have been, been dead already. But because how God allowed that thing to happen and how God allowed it to maneuver in my life, I'm standing here today. I'm standing here today declaring the word of God. Declare the word of God. Amen. Because of my grateful heart, God saw fit to see me be in the pulpit. Ain't that something? It couldn't, it, it wasn't my choice, it was God's choice. It was God choosing us to do what He wants us to do. It was God putting us in this place where He wants us to be. It's God got you here today, not you yourself. Sometimes we think we ourselves doing what we do for ourselves. You just think about it. If you don't, you don't, you don't get your breath from yourself. Somebody, God will give you the breath that you breathe. God will give you the, the, the being that you have. It is God that given us what we have. And that's why He said everything. Give thanks. Unto the Lord. Amen. Giving thanks to the Lord means forgiving people. I always have a, a forgiving heart. It don't matter how many times a person hurt you, guess what? Forgive them. The Bible says forgive your brother for how long? 490 times a day. 70 times 7. Amen. And you can't, if you, you hold somebody over 490 times a day, you ain't pretty bad shit. So you ought to be able to let go and let God, amen, after 490 times. You gotta forgive your brother, you gotta forgive your sister, you gotta forgive your mother, you gotta forgive your father, you gotta forgive those that lied on you, you gotta forgive those that still lying on you, you gotta forgive those that said they love you and don't love you, you gotta forgive those, amen, that could say all manner of things and get you against you because Jesus, when he was on the cross, he looked out among all the people, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they've done. Some folks don't know what they did to hurt you. Some folks don't know why they hurt you. Some folks don't know why they put you in the position you're in. Some folks don't know why you're going through what you're going through. But you can just look to God and ask God to forgive them. And ask you to give you a forgiving heart to forgive them. Because sometimes we hold people that, and that's why we can't be thankful for everybody we see. We can't thank God for them because every time we see them, we think of the bad. Make me sick. They know what they did to me last year. Caused me to go to jail. You haven't been doing what you've done, you might have went to jail. You done what's right, you would have went to jail, even though they did lie. You were doing something wrong for you to go. There was something wrong happened that made that happen. 
And sometimes we're just looking at the person, but you don't look into the whole thing. Look at the whole picture. The devil paint a partial picture. He don't show you the whole thing. All he do is paint a picture showing you one person. He don't show you that whole circle of people that you involved in that situation that's going on in your life. He don't show you how they, they would cause you not to be thankful for that person because they play the role as well. And sometimes we hold people captive. Because what we don't understand, how we don't know how to, to dissect that thing, how we don't know how to, to search into it and how to find out all the information about that thing. Because good information takes you along the way. Bad information can kill you off. But if you get good information about a situation, it helps you heal. It helps you get delivered. It helps you get motivated. It helps you to keep on going in life. It helps you to forgive people that don't want to forgive you. It helps you to be able to just motivate yourself above that situation that you might be in at the present moment. Amen. Good information. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God for you to thank Him. It's always, God wants you to always be thankful. He wants you to always have a forgiving heart. He don't want you to go around holding folks because they're holding you. Hey, check this out. If a person don't like me, I ain't got no reason to go around not liking them. Amen. If they don't like me, that's person problem. That's their problem. That's their problem. Because I'm God's property. Look at your neighbor and say, you're God's property. And God's property to forgive people. God is a forgiving God. God is a merciful God. God looked beyond people far to see their need. God looked up beyond that thing that they, they hold. And if we hold it, we need to let go. We need to let go and let God. Because God wants us to always be thankful for everybody that he, that's in our life. Thankful for that baby dad. Yeah. Amen. Thankful for that mother, that mother of that, that son or that daughter. Be thankful for everything because it's all in the will of God. The Bible said everything. Give thanks. And that's why Paul went back and said, all things. Romans 8 and 28, he said, all things works together for the good of those that love the Lord. Now, if you don't love God, it, it's hard for you to understand some stuff. It's hard for you to comprehend forgiving your brother. It's hard for you to comprehend loving your mother and though they may, may hurt you. It's hard for you to understand some of the things your father or your brother or sister might have done to you if you don't love the Lord. We're not saying just know about the Lord, but we're talking about knowing the Lord as your personal Savior. Loving God with all your heart. Loving God beyond what you see happen in your life. Loving God takes us and let everything works together for our good. All that Paul went through, it worked for his good. Everything he did to all of his brothers that is when he was saved, when he got saved, it began to work for his good. He began to understand how the, the church would be prosecuted. After he got, he was prosecuting the church. He began to learn that, amen, that this was, what, this was wrong. And now he's going to allow it to work together for the good of him because he loved the Lord now. He's not doing it his way anyway. Your way don't work in this thing. God's way is the way to do it. God's way is the way to go. God's way is the only way. God's way will get you out of the dump. God will take you from disgrace to grace. God will take you from down to under to above. God will lift your head when you're hanging it down and feel like it does nothing to hold your head up for. God is the great I am. He is the God that healed thee. Amen. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall be continuously be in my mouth. I know I did some wrong things, God, but I will bless your name because you are merciful, God. I know I didn't do everything right, God, but I will bless your name because you are merciful, God. I will give you thanks, God, because of your mercy endures forever. God don't hold us like we hold people. God forgive us and go on. But sometimes we don't want to forgive and go on. 
But God said today, forgive and go on. Be thankful. Be grateful. Be humble in all that He do for us. Because giving thanks to the Lord is very important. And I thank God for all of my children. I thank God for all of my grandchildren. It don't matter what they don't did, I still thank God for them. It don't matter how they come with, come against me or whatever, I still thank God for them. Because they part of the bloodline. They part of the inheritance. They part of what God is doing in me. So I give thanks to the Lord for all. For all of my brothers, all of my sisters, all of my brothers, because that's just the will of that's how we stay on the blessed side of the Lord, by giving thanks and being a forgiving person, being a loving person, in spite of all of our hurt and our brokenness. Because God don't want us to walk around with our head down because of what happened in a situation. But at the end of the day, let us be thankful. Let us remember that God, He is good. And His mercy is everlasting. The love that we have is an everlasting love. I don't love you because of what you do for me. I don't love you because of what you can do for me. But I love you because of who you is. Because of who you are. Because of who I am in Christ. Because of who God is in my life. I love you because of the love of God. God helps us to love beyond faults. And if you ever want to overcome some of the stuff you been keep being battled about, just take a hold to the love of God. Take root of the love of God. Take hold full. Just give God a big hug. Say, God, I love you so much. I want to forgive everybody in this world. I want to just walk right upright before every man. Everybody I see, I love them. Everybody I see, I'm happy. Everybody I see, I'm willing to try to help them. Everybody I see, I just want to be a, a helping hand. I want that love that runs from heart to heart, from mind to mind. I want that heart, I want that love that goes beyond the call of duty. I want to be thankful. I want to have a giving heart. I want to be just one of those that God can say, do this and do that. And I'll be willing to do it. It's some of us in that position now that God is using to keep the family together. Using to, to, to break the barriers of what the enemy tried to do to the family. God is using some of us to keep the family together. He's using some of us to speak to the situation that's over our families. But let us continue to be thankful for all of our children, all of our all of our loved ones. Because everybody don't treat us right. But we can treat everybody right. We can do everybody right. We can be there for everybody. We can do what God wants us to do. So they can see the thankfulness. They can see the good the get the goodness of God operating in thanksgiving and love and kindness. And at the end of the day, I encourage you to, amen. Oh, you can be thankful for your mother. You can be thankful for your father. You can be thankful for your brothers and your sisters. You can be thankful for the community that you live in. You can be thankful for the car you drive. You can be thankful for your life, health, and strength. You can be thankful for the house you live in. You can be thankful for all of these things through the grace of God. Because God gives us that grace to embrace. God give us that grace to be grateful. God give us that grace that we may be able to just share with other people of His goodness because God is good and His mercy is everlasting. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. The love of God endures forever. A grateful heart endures forever. Grateful. I'm grateful for all of my family. I'm grateful for my church family. I'm grateful for what God has put in my possession. I'm grateful for what God has meant to me.
me. I'm grateful because he didn't have to do it. But out of all the people he picked me, out of all the people he picked you to do certain stuff, ain't that something? Amen. Amen. And you can look back sometimes and be like, he, he picked me to be able to do this, this, that, all of that. Because of his gratefulness. Because that's how great God is. And his grace. And I'm telling you, let us just stand fast in the liberty in which Christ has set us free. Amen. Let us not get back entangled with those things that will cause us not to be free. And let us always be thankful and grateful because God is in control. And I pray that a blessing was spoken over your life through the Word of God. The Bible wants us to be thankful in everything. Everything be thankful. And everything give thanks. I'm telling you, I mean, it's amazing the things that we think about. All of us from near the end here are supposed to be dead. If we think back over our lives, some of the stuff we've been through, we know we're supposed to be dead. It was nothing but the prayer of the righteous. Somebody was praying for me. They had me on my mind. Had me on their mind and took the time and prayed for me. Because I know it wasn't nothing to be praying. If it had to be, if it had to be, I've been dead. But the prayer of the righteous. Somebody was grateful to God on my behalf. Somebody is grateful to God on your behalf. Somebody is petitioning God on our behalf, even right now. And I'm, I'm encouraging you. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, what better time is it than now? No man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man should come. No man knows when his last breath will be taken. But it's good to know where you're going if you take your last breath. It's good to know where your destination will be, whether it be hell or heaven. And you know, and God will all, He wished that no man should perish. He wished that all men would come to Him and know Him as their personal Savior. Amen. And I believe, I believe that God is speaking to the hearts of somebody even right now. This is, this is a very simple message. It didn't seem like it had that much ingredients to it, but little is much when God is in it. And if it's God's word, His word will not return void. So whatever God had this word for, it's going to do what it's got to do. It might not do it right at this moment right now, but it might walk out the door and He do it. Whatever God, whatever God said for, it's for a purpose. And I believe we get living in a time, especially with our younger people, they need to be start being more thankful. It seems like I see that a lot, even in my own family. It seems like people think you owe them something. It seems like they feel like you you supposed to do this. You're supposed to nourish my child. You're supposed to wash my clothes. You're supposed to clean my room if I decide not to. You're supposed to make sure I got a ride if I don't mess up my ride. You're supposed to put money in my hand if I don't have no money. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. We're not supposed to do nothing but love you and make sure that you protect me. Something is not our responsibility. Something we do because we thank God for you as a child. We thank God for you as a granddaughter, a grandson, a son, a daughter. It's not that we have to, but we choose to. So don't try to sum of us. Tie our parents up and handcuff them like they are bound to whatever you say. We are not bound to what you say. And you need to be careful because you cut yourself off from your blessing. You can't force mama to do nothing.
that you can't force daddy to do nothing. If they do it, they do it because they love you. Yes. And they want to make life better for you. Yes. But they ain't got to do nothing. Yes. But what they do. Yes. They don't get enough, they raise you. Yes. They make sure all your needs were met when you was coming up. Yes. And young people, we need to be more thankful. Yes. We need to be more grateful for the father, for the son, for the grandmother, granddaughter, whoever it is, a grandmother, grandfather, whoever it is, playing a role in your life. You need to be more thankful to them and thank to God for them. Because a lot of children are holding their parents hostage. Now loose them from that right now. In the name of Jesus, it's time for young people to take their place in life and to be more thankful and stop blaming the parents for everything going wrong in their lives. I had the opportunity to blame my mother and father for everything that was wrong in my life because they didn't do too much what was right. And I couldn't blame them for every wrong I ever done. But guess what? When I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I realized why my mom and them did what they did because they didn't know Jesus Christ. 